I guess $500 sounded like a good offer. This incident happened a year or two ago, again at a tanning salon. As I mentioned in my previous post, I have worked for a tanning company for seven years and have encountered my fair share of creeps. I had been working at this particular location for about three years at this point and had quite a few regulars. Most were very sweet people who usually were in and out pretty quickly. But we did have a few people who lingered, spent a few hours talking to you. You could just tell they were very lonely. This was the case of John. John was an older gentleman, late 60s, hobbled with the help of a cane, gave off an odd vibe, but overall seemed harmless. I got to know John pretty well learned that he had no family or friends. His mother passed a few years earlier, and he was still pretty distraught over it. We bonded over the fact that he was in the military, and talked about his deployments as my boyfriend was a Marine, and was deployed at this time. I learned very quickly that John liked to gamble. He was always grabbing lotto tickets from the grocery store next door. And his first trip after getting his disability check was to the casino. John soon started buying me scratch-off tickets as well. It was fun at first. He brings a ticket here and there and we'd scratch them as we chatted. This started to become an everyday event and I began to feel uncomfortable. I asked John to stop buying me scratch-offs as it just didn't sit well with me. He obliged and things went back to normal. It was around this time that I went on vacation. My boyfriend was coming home from deployment, so I went to his base to welcome him. We spent two weeks on vacation and had an awesome time. I was not looking forward to returning to work. My first day back, John comes in, as expected. We get to talking about my trip and how nice it was to finally see my boyfriend after months apart. We spend about 45 minutes talking about the details of my trip when John interrupts to ask if he could ask me a question. I replied, sure. I had just received my disability check and was wondering if I paid you $500. Would you have sex with me? Um, what? I was a bit taken back, but quickly came to my senses. I said, no, I would never do that. Told him he needed to leave the premises and never return to our store. I called the police to file a report, mainly because I had plenty of young girls that worked for me and would never want them encountering this creep. They take this information. Luckily, we have his address and everything in our computer system. And because he was caught offering a specific amount on our surveillance video, he would be arrested for soliciting. He was arrested, and I hope to never see him again. A few weeks later, I'm checking out at the grocery store. Yep, the one located next to the tanning salon. And as I'm walking out, I look to my right into a small eating area. Lo and behold, there he is, staring at me from a bench. I pick up my pace and make my way to the parking lot. This crazy starts screaming my name, hobbling after me, waving his cane in the air, calling me a bitch and every other name known to man. This was a crowded parking lot. People were staring like, what the hell is going on? I turned around, screamed at the top of my lungs for him to leave me the fuck alone, and proceeded to my car. Never saw him again. He tried to break in. So about a year ago, my parents and I were offered to stay a week in a friend's cottage in northern Michigan. 
Of course, we accepted the offer and packed up our things and brought our great Dane with us. About five days into the stay, my parents went a few towns away to hit some bars and have fun. I didn't mind because I liked being alone a lot of the time. At about 12.30, my parents weren't home yet, and my dog started flipping out. He was running all over the house growling and barking. Naturally, I'm scared shitless. I grab my pocket knife and barricade the bedroom door. For about 10 minutes, my dog continues barking. When my dog stops barking, I get a call from my parents. They say they're too drunk to drive home and are going to stay at a motel nearby. I don't get a minute of sleep that night, and when I decide it's safe enough to get up, I notice something that chilled me to the bone. The screens of my bedroom windows were cut. I burst out of my room and see that every screen in the cottage is cut. What I think happened is some creep decided to try to break into the cottage through the doors originally. Since I'm careful about security, I made sure that those were locked. After the creep was unsuccessful with the doors, he cut the screens and tried to get in through the windows. It had been a hot night that night, so before my parents left, they turned on the AC and I locked all the windows. I assumed that he made some sort of noise that woke up my dog, causing my dog to freak out. Then the creep must have left. I called my parents and then called the cops. The cops didn't find any trace of the guy, and as soon as they were done with the investigation, my family and I were out of there. So, to the guy who tried to break into the cottage my family was staying in, let's not meet. Creepy Mall Druggie This happened to me a couple of hours ago tonight. My friends and I went to a fair today and saw some fireworks. It started to get late, so we walked over to a barely lit up mall so my dad could pick me and my friends up around 11.45 p.m. We sat around for a while and walked around in the dark. At some point, we decided to sit down. While we were all looking at our phones, some guy with ragged jeans and long hair comes up to us. He had one hand in his pocket and he got up real close to me and said, Clearly drunk. You aren't not. Then he looked up to my friend and said, Hey man, I know your mom. You got her number on that thing? This friend had just lost his mom a month ago. He was silent and obviously hurt. My other friend, kind of a jackass, thinks it's funny to start heckling this weirdo. The dude starts to get mad and gets close to him mumbling something we couldn't understand. We got up and started backing away. The guy starts humming and dancing like a start in the pitch dark. We get freaked out and book it. I started to film him with my phone until he full on sprints at me. I've never been so scared in my life. We run through the dark mall, over behind some carts. We see him yelling and waving a knife around dancing. My dad pulled up just in time. Creepy knife wielding guy. Let's not meet again.